Hey there, Dango Stu here. In today's quick tip, we're just gonna be talking a little bit about primer bulbs. These fuel primer bulbs will be pretty familiar to anyone with an outboard motor. The idea is they let you send fuel from the tank up to the fuel pump, which isn't really capable of pumping air. Then once it's primed with fuel, it can start pulling fuel through. One thing that's not as well known, and in some circles even disputed, is that they pump better, both air and fuel, but particularly air, before they've been primed, when the arrow that indicates the direction of fuel flow is pointing straight up. So I have the end coming from your tank, straight down to your tank, wherever it goes, hold the bulb vertical, and then let the other side come back. And even if it starts with nothing but air in it, you'll find very quickly, it'll prime pretty solidly. Now what I'm gonna do is take this one, we'll cut it open, and I'll show you why that's the case. So here's the arrow for the direction of flow. So I'll just sort of cut a bit of a window out of this one. Inside the main part of the bulb is pretty much nothing. It's just the space that you squeeze to push the fuel out, and then as the natural elasticity in the bulb expands, it draws fuel in. So the thing that allows this to act as a, a one-way pump, rather than just pushing fuel backwards and forwards every time you squeeze it, are these two one-way valves. On the side closest to the outboard, you've got a little ball bearing valve here and a spring below it. And on the side here, closest to the tank, you've got a spring on top and the ball below that. So I'll cut one of those open and I'll show you what they look like. Although it's a little bit munted from cutting it in half, this is what these valves look like inside. So this side here goes to the fuel line. This side here goes into the primer bulb. What you can see is you've got a little seat here, the ball here and a spring. So as you squeeze the bulb, fuel can come this way with enough pressure to push this spring back and have this little ball come away from the seat so fuel can flow. But as soon as you let go of the bulb, the spring pushes the ball back and closes it off against the seat. This means that the fuel that flowed through doesn't just get sucked back. Now, the valve on the other side is set up the opposite way so fuel can come in under vacuum instead of under pressure. So I'll draw the two of them on the board together now just so you can see how they work in concert. As you can see in this diagram, we've got the fuel flowing left to right. And what that means is as you squeeze the bulb, it's going to push against here and close this ball bearing even tighter, but it's gonna have enough pressure in when you squeeze it to push this ball bearing against this spring and let fuel out. When you then let go of the primer bulb, it starts to create a bit of a vacuum in here. Now this vacuum closes this ball against this valve here, against this seat, even tighter. The spring pushes it as well, but the vacuum that gets created is strong enough to pull this little ball bearing here against this spring and start to suck fuel in. And so between these pulses of squeezing and, and letting go and the pressure and vacuum, you're constantly open and closing these two valves. Now the reason holding it vertically helps is because gravity obviously affects these two ball bearings and makes them close against their seats. So even if these springs are weak, when you hold it arrow up, this valve tries to close and this valve tries to close because of gravity. Now, you want one to open and one to close at the right time, and obviously gravity is always working in one direction, but gravity is helping it close under vacuum when you've let go of the pump. Now, that, when you let go, the vacuum's not particularly strong. It's only the elasticity in the rubber that gives it that force. Whereas when you're squeezing, you've got plenty of strength in your hand, you can put quite a lot of force to open it. So even with this pointing up, when you squeeze your hand, you've got more than enough strength to push this valve open. When you let it go and you want this to close, gravity is just giving it a bit of a helping hand to make sure it seals and you don't just suck that air or fuel that you displaced straight back into the pump. To try and make it a little bit clearer, if you were to hold it the exact opposite way, gravity would be pushing these little ball bearings against the springs. And in that case, when you let go of the bulb, the bulb would start to open up, the vacuum would pull this one away, which is good because you want fuel to come through this way, but the vacuum would be expected to actually pull this little ball bearing up against gravity to close. So if this spring was weak and you had the arrow pointing down, you're expecting the vacuum created by the elasticity in the bulb to actually draw this ball bearing up against gravity and block this off, which it's not likely to do. So they're the kind of two extremes of going up, down, and mostly horizontal. If the springs are doing their job, 
they work pretty much in any orientation. But if ever you find it's not working for you, by having this arrow pointing up, gravity will be on your side and you might find that you just overcome a bit of a fault with the bulb and get that motor primed. Mm -hmm.